Hello everybody and welcome to the Simple Cooking with Heart kitchen in my home. I am executive chef Stephanie Rose and I am going to make something very cool. Something I've been trying to make for almost a year I'd say and it's hard to pronounce. It's called shakshuka. You've probably seen it out there. It's a fancy name for eggs in purgatory. That's right. <laughs> eggs in purgatory. So don't poo poo the eggs. We love our eggs, right? You can have eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, and this is a really easy meal. You might even have some of this stuff already in your pantry. So let's start with getting our pan hot. I decided to use my iron skillet tonight and we're going to go for some really, you know, and use a nice olive oil because that is what they use for the most part in the Mediterranean. So I'm gonna put maybe a tablespoon of olive oil in there and get that kind of warm. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about some of the ingredients that are going into this. I have here, as you can see, green tomatoes. The recipe actually calls for two beautiful, ripe, juicy red tomatoes. Well, I ate all my red tomatoes. So, uh, or uh, actually, no, that's not true. I put some in the freezer. But anyway, I have all of these leftover green tomatoes. So I wanted to try it with this recipe. Why not? And I had tons of peppers, red peppers and yellow peppers and orange peppers. I roasted them all off, peeled them, deseeded them, and I put them in the freezer. So now is the time to do all of that because there is an abundanza of fresh vegetables just dying to be cooked out there. So this is about half, um, half an onion diced up. I'm cheating a little bit. We're going to saute that in this pan. I'm hoping you can see, try not to flick it all over the place. Don't have time to dice everything up for you, but we are going to, that's why I already have it done, saute all of this goodness together. I want to add my red peppers. I'm going to save my roasted red peppers so a little bit later. This actually calls for, it's going to serve six, so that's going to be six eggs, but I don't know if I can fit six eggs in this pan. So we want to saute this a little bit, get this all Get everything nice and translucent. And if y'all have never been to um, North Africa, that's uh, where Tunisia is, is actually a, there at the tip of Tunisia. And believe it or not, I have a Tunisian cookbook. Of course, I had to look up the recipe and I never really noticed this one, shakshuka. So I wanted to see what they put in it and also to see if I could still read French. And, um, oh, look at this picture, see? Isn't it beautiful? It's done in an earthen terrain, so I guess they do that over the fire. But very simple ingredients, and they have many different variations. So it's like you can just, you can start off with the plain one, and then they have ones where you can add sec vion, um, which is dried, dried meat. So I'm guessing, you know, sausages, there are some recipes out there that have greens in them. So I guess the sky's the limit. But I also wanted to see what kind of herbs and spices that they use. So they have the, the, the oignon and they have tomate and poivron. Those are peppers and, and garlic, of course. And coriander, which is wonderful. You know, that's the seed of the cilantro. So I've got the very perfumey, lovely. I want to use some of that today and mine as well. And they had carvey. I'm like, I don't know what carvey is. So I had to look that one up and that actually is caraway. And I was like, oh no. I looked and I looked in my cupboard, which is right behind me, full of, full, 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 falling out. Everything's coming out. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe that I don't have any. So I went out and bought some. And I just thought it'd be nice to really get the flavor, you know, powerful. So I'm gonna grind it myself. So I have the, the caraway seeds and I have the cumin seeds that are in my little, little hoogie, my mortar, mortal and pestle. 
So this is gonna, oh, I can already smell them. They are so totally fragrant. Okay, now I think I'm ready to add my my green tomatoes because they probably take a little bit longer to cook than the regular tomatoes. I'm gonna get those in there. We don't want this to be too dry. In the picture, it looks like it's really kind of kind of wet. So let's get these in here. Cook that, get that cooking a little bit. Let me finish grinding my spices because there's nothing like a freshly ground seed. And you know that when you have the whole spice, it'll last in your cupboard for up to two years. So there is an advantage to buying it whole. The ground, you know, does not last as long. And I guess you could keep the seeds in your freezer, but, but I don't, and this is beautiful. Oh, oh, it, it smells divine. And you know, if you toast your spices a little bit, even in a dry pan, it wakes up the flavor. So I always kind of add my spices last before I start adding in any, any liquid. So what else do we have to add here? Okay, so this one's gonna get, let's go ahead and add my little, my roasted red peppers that I absolutely adore. And we have the garlic. I believe it was two cloves of garlic. Stir that up. Now I did find it um, interesting also that our recipe has Parmesan cheese and quite a bit that you can put on at the end on top of it, which I found very interesting. Of course, we don't need any salt and that's giving us our salt. I do love Parmesan cheese and I only buy it in a block because the pre-grated cheese often has some other additions in it that I don't particularly care for. So you know, the more you stir up your pan, <laughs> the more you're gonna bring the heat down. So stop playing with the pan. Uh, so here I have my yogurt that's gonna go on the side. And then you serve it with the yogurt on the side and you serve it with some flatbread. But I also thought tortillas would be delicious because this is kind of resem you know, re reminiscent, there's the word I'm looking for, of huevos rancheros, which is one of my absolutely favorites. So if you don't have the Parmesan, which I keep in my freezer, go ahead and get some feta. And then if you don't have any feta, if you happen to have some of the cotijo cheese, which is very similar to the feta, you can sprinkle that on as well. So this is looking good. Like I said, I think these tomatoes are probably gonna take a little bit longer. We may have to take a little break and come back to it, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my dry spice, uh, the harissa. I just wanted to show you. I have several different kinds of harissa. When I was a little girl, this one was, if you were brave enough, to, to eat this, you know, you you would you would win the prize. So I don't think I was ever really brave enough uh, when I was younger. Um, but this one's super hot. This other uh, variety is not so hot. Okay, so the one that is super hot, remember, is the, the Cap Bon, and this is authentic Tunisian. But you can also get it dry. So I mean, I've seen it on the shelves out there in the store. Some dry harissa powder again I, if you can't find that you can't find the can you could probably really make a make a nice mixture with paprika or some hot paprika some cumin here we go that's my cumin and caraway and remember i want to put a little bit of coriander because that's what it says in my book so here i've got my spices in here now my dried spices Got, I put my garlic in, We're waking up the flavor. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put in some of the, the mild harissa. Comes out, Woo, there, there we go. This is a little watery, it's kind of weird. It's a weird one, <laughs> that's okay. I like to try them on. It's smelling pretty darn good here. Yay, oh, losing it. All right, so we've got just about everything in here. Ah, last but not least, tomato paste. So we get a tablespoon 
of tomato paste. It might be a little bit more, but I almost want to add some liquid, but we'll, we'll see. If I do, you know, so I, I want to add water probably so it doesn't change the nutritional value here. Well, here we go. Got the tomato paste. Hopefully that'll get nicely incorporated here and maybe even caramelize a little bit and bring out some of the, the sweetness. All right, let that, stop playing with your food. If y'all cook with me at all in the kitchen, you know that I will, I will take your spoon away, right? So I have this wonderful little old um, grater and actually, no, pepper grinder. I've never used it, so let's, let's give it a shot. Uh-oh, is she working? Is she working? Uh huh. I have no idea. Ah, it goes into here. <laughs> oh, I love it. And it's working. Oh, that is so cool. I think they had these in um, North African or it might be Turkish, but who cares? Oh, that was that was fun. That was kind of cool. All right, you can see everything's kind of softening up now. I'm loving that. And now I'm almost going to let that cook a few more minutes. Okay. On that note, we'll be right back. My shashuka has been simmering a few minutes and I think I'm ready to put in some eggs. So again, I'm probably only gonna put four in. Now, you know, the eggs have a lot of, a lot of liquid. So I kind of wanna put them in my little handy dandy strainer just to get some of that liquid out of them before I put them in. Okay. Now you wanna make a little hole, kind of an indentation, where you're gonna put your egg. That's exciting, this is the fun part. Please don't break, please don't break. Oh, all right. One recipe did actually say to sort of swirl the white part around, so I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna to try to get all these bad boys in here. And a good amount of time. <laughs> Okay, without making too much of a mess. Chef Stephanie Rose with my shakshuka. This took a little bit longer to cook than I thought. I've, it's been cooking more like 13 minutes or so for them all to get nice, all the white part cooked. You can see it all bubbling. I put some cheese on it. I put a little bit of more uh, black pepper and I can't imagine serving anything from the Mediterranean without some fresh parsley nice Italian flat leaf parsley on top of it. There we have it. Breakfast for dinner or lunch or however you want to look at it. I'm going to take a little bit out. I can't wait. Oh, that looks divine. I have some flatbread here. Oh, my tomatoes are nicely caramelized and the green tomatoes are beautiful and soft. I think this would be lovely. You could serve this also with a side salad. Nice little, you know, six ounces of some juice or, you know, just delicious. Smells divine. Put my little garnish on top of it. And bon appetit, everybody. I hope you enjoy your eggs in purgatory.